Good evening. Uh, again, my name is Jennifer Hammondy. I'm chair of the National Transportation Safety Board. And with me today is John Lovell. Uh, John, and it's, it's L-O-V-E-L-L. -L. He's our senior aviation accident investigator uh, with the NTSB. He's been with the NTSB for uh, 24 years, but many more years in aviation, and he'll be the lead investigator for this investigation. Uh, we call the lead investigator the investigator in charge, or IIC. The National Transportation Safety Board is an independent federal agency charged by Congress with investigating every civil aviation accident in the United States and significant events in all other modes of transportation. Our goal always is to save lives. So at the end of our investigation, we issue safety recommendations that are aimed at preventing tragedies from reoccurring. However, we don't have to wait for a final report to take action. At any point during an investigation, we can issue an urgent safety recommendation, again, at any point during an investigation, so that we address any uh, potential safety issues early on. Now, we're here investigating an accident, and yes, we've uh, now determined, based on our definition of substantial damage, that it is an accident, not an incident, uh, that occurred around 6.38 p.m. Pacific Standard Time yesterday, Friday, January 5th, uh, 2024. Alaska Airlines Flight 1282, a Boeing 737-9, Tail number November 704 Alpha Lima, departed Portland International Airport for Ontario, California, and returned after a mid-cabin door plug, it was that mid-cabin door was aft of the wings, uh, departed the airplane, resulting in rapid decompression. Just taking a second on the door plug, when uh, you are a customer, purchased, such as an airline, purchasing an aircraft, uh, Boeing would make an airframe, one airframe, uh, which is sold to multiple customers, and the customers will order uh, the design that they need for their operations. This particular uh, aircraft for Alaska is certified for up to 189 passengers uh, and given uh, the 189 passenger threshold, uh, Alaska would not have to have emergency exit doors at that location in the aircraft. Alaska actually only has on this uh, plane 178 seats. For a higher uh, con uh, density configuration, the a, an emergency exit door would have to be on that airframe for uh, anything certified at 200 passengers, I'm sorry, 215 passengers or 220 passengers. But this uh, door mid-cabin uh, door plug, uh, there's one on the left, there's one on the right. They are not operational. What you would see in the cabin if you are a passenger is a window and just part of the cabin. You would not see those as doors unless you were outside uh, of the aircraft. Now we know that there were 171 passengers on board the airplane uh, with two pilots. The captain was flying at the time. They also had uh, four flight attendants on board. Fortunately, all passengers deplaned. We are not aware of any serious injuries. We are aware of reports of minor injuries. With that said, I imagine this was a pretty terrifying event. We don't often talk about psychological injury, but I'm sure that occurred here. So on behalf of the National Transportation Safety Board, uh, I would like to extend our deepest sympathies to, to those that experienced what I imagine was truly terrifying. So today we arrived uh, on scene at 3.12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
The first order of business for me was to see the aircraft, outside the aircraft and inside. Uh, we then proceeded to an organizational meeting. At the organizational meeting, uh, we bring together everyone that will be part of the factual fact-finding phase of our investigation and plan out how we intend to proceed over the next several days uh, and the next several weeks. We also took some time to designate parties to our investigation. The NTSB always works in what we call a party process during the fact-finding uh, phase of our investigation. What that means is we bring together technical experts that would have access to all the factual information. They help us gather that factual information. But after the fact-finding phase, uh, it is only the NTSB that does the analysis, develops the findings, develops the probable cause, and issues the safety recommendations. So parties to our investigation are the Federal Aviation Administration, Boeing, Alaska Airlines, the Airline Pilots Association, and the Association of Flight Attendants. Again, they are only part of the fact-finding phase. For example, if we need maintenance records, and again, that's just an example, we would know who to go to, who the technical experts are as part of our party system. Now, I get, again, I mentioned that John Lovell is our investigator in charge, but with him, uh, we have a number of NTSB staff that have particular expertise in certain areas. Flight operations, survival factors and cabin safety, structures, aircraft systems including pressurization systems. We have a metallurgist here. Our meteorology and air traffic control team is back at headquarters but is reporting information to us from there and we have a team uh, for recorders. Now the recorders will be sent back to our lab tomorrow uh, morning at some point. Again, I mentioned we arrived just around 3, 3.15 uh, this afternoon. Uh, so tomorrow is our first full day of our investigation. Today was just the planning phase. Uh, so we have a lot of work to do. I imagine I'm going to get a lot of questions about manufacture, design, uh, maintenance, repair, delivery of the, air, uh, the aircraft itself. We don't have that right now. Right now we had to get on scene, we had to organize, we will have more information tomorrow. I expect we'll have a press briefing tomorrow, also the next day and as long as we need to in order to provide you and the public the information that you deserve. So with that, I will not speculate on anything as part of, uh, of the question and answer portion of this uh, press conference. Now I want to emphasize, because uh, those uh, uh, who are here today will likely ask me questions about safety and our aviation system. Those watching may be curious about safety or concerned about safety. We have the safest aviation system in the world. It is incredibly safe. We are the global gold standard for safety around the world, but we have to maintain that standard. We are very, very fortunate here that this didn't end up in something more tra uh, tragic. No one was seated in 26 A and B where, the, where that, door, that uh, door plug is. The uh, aircraft was around 16,000 feet and only 10 minutes out from, the, air, from uh, the airport when the door blew. Fortunately, they were not at cruise altitude of 30,000 or 30,000, 35,000 feet. Think about what happens when you're in cruise. Everybody's up and walking. Folks don't have seatbelts on. Uh, they're going to uh, restrooms. The flight attendants are providing service to passengers. 
we could have end up with, ended up with something so much more tragic and we're re really fortunate that that did not occur here. Now, um, I would like to take a moment and thank, thank some entities uh, and individuals. First and foremost, I wanna, I wanna thank the Secretary of Transportation. Uh, he reached out to me today just to express uh, support and coordination with, for the investigation. I've been on the phone since this morning and actually really last night uh, with the Federal Aviation Administration Administrator, Mike Whitaker. He has been very communicative, communicative with us and very supportive of our work as we have of, of theirs today. I, I, do, I am very encouraged that they took swift and decisive action to ensure continued safety in our airspace. I also want to thank the first responders, the, the heroes uh, after such tragedies, the Port of Portland Police Department and the Port of Portland Fire Department did an incredible job. Thank you for all your work. I also want to thank the FBI and the local law enforcement. You may see the FBI here. We have, the NTSB has a memorandum of understanding with the FBI to help us collect evidence. Uh, they, we may need equipment at some, some points during an investigation and they help provide that to us. In this case, they're helping local law enforcement locate uh, the door and components that came off the aircraft in flight. But now we need the public's help. We know uh, from looking at radar data, well, at least we believe from looking at radar data that the door is around Barnes Road near I-217 and the Cedar Hills neighborhood. If you find that, please, please contact local law enforcement. You can also email us at witness.gov. We are active wit, at, witness at I'm so sorry, witness at ntsb.gov. That's again, witness at ntsb.gov. Uh, but it, it would be a help to us uh, incredibly for our investigation if you find that to reach out, of course. We also are looking for pictures and video from inside the aircraft. Again, please email those uh, to witness at ntsb.gov. Now, um, we will update all of you on uh, future uh, press conference or uh, press conferences or updates. Please check our social media platforms and ntsb.gov. So with that, I'm going to take some questions. Uh, I will call on you. Please state your name, your affiliation. Please limit your questions to one question. We'll do multiple rounds. Uh, but I just want to make sure that others get their questions in. Yes. Hi there, Jacqueline Lane with ABC News. How concerned are you about the safety of Boeing 737 MAX fleet? Uh, the question is, how concerned are you in the safety of the Boeing 737 MAX fleet? Our investigation right now is focused on this particular aircraft, and we're early on in the investigation, so we can't make any uh, broad uh, statements about the fleet. Uh, but I am very encouraged, again, that the FAA took action to temporarily ground uh, this particular uh, aircraft for inspection and uh, for addressing any uh, potential concerns that were identified through those inspections. Yes. Uh, so the question is, uh, where was the nearest person uh, to uh, this particular uh, uh, portion of the um, structure that uh, blew out? And whether there was a teenager or an adult near that particular location. That is part of what our uh, cabin safety and survival factors team will determine. I have asked that, in, I've asked that question myself,
but I've gotten different answers. So until we can really factually determine who was where, uh, I don't want to provide a, a inaccurate information. Hopefully I'll have that for you tomorrow. Yes? Uh, the question is, how long it, will it take to inspect the MAX 9s? I don't have that answer, but FAA could probably provide that answer to you or the airlines themselves. Other questions? Yes. Uh, the question is, will we uh, conduct uh, an investigation of FAA's oversight of Boeing? Uh, will we look at uh, Boeing's uh, process for manufacturing this aircraft? At this stage of an investigation, everything's in. We go very broad. Nothing's excluded. So as we are gathering information, and looking at the evidence, we could go very broad or we could hone in uh, to certain areas of the investigation. So it's pretty early on, uh, but we don't exclude anything at this point of the investigation. Yes? Megan Allison, Cason News. We saw that this plane was certified as safe to fly about two months ago. Who does that certification? Is it Boeing? Is it the FAA? Who determined that this plane was safe to fly? Uh, the question is, uh, who determines uh, whether this uh, plane uh, was certified safe to fly. Uh, we'll have to look at how, how it was certified. All, all we have right now is that it was delivered uh, to Alaska on November 11th. That is information I can provide. Anything beyond that, I don't want to speculate. I want to see it in writing myself and uh, make sure that we answer it accurately. The question is regarding the injuries and the extent of the injuries. That's something that local law enforcement will have to provide. So yes. we've all seen the video, but what is, what's the conditions like inside of a jet when there's you know, a hole gets blown into it? Uh, the question is, what, what were the conditions like at the time when uh, this portion of the aircraft blew out? Or even in general. Or in general. So, I mean, I can describe it how I see it right now. Um, I've seen the same video. I've seen uh, the same pictures. Um, so they're on 26A and 25A. The headrests are gone. On uh, 26A, uh, part of the seat, uh, the um, back of the seat is gone. Um, there are some uh, clothing items in the area. Uh, we, I, we can see that um, uh, the uh, stop uh, uh, portions of the door are still intact on the door. Now, I will say one good thing that, about this aircraft is there is an identical intact uh, door plug just on the other side. So there's a left one and a right one. We're going to be able to look at the right one, which is fully intact, and, and see uh, what that one looks like and compare it. Uh, in speaking to some uh, who uh, spoke with the flight crew and others, uh, not from our conversations, but I'm relaying uh, what we have uh, been told, uh, that it was a very chaotic scene, very chaotic, um, very loud, uh, which you can't really hear on the video, but it is very loud. Um, I, will, I'm, I hope that we are going to uh, be able to provide a little bit more information on what the flight crew itself experienced and the flight attendants experienced uh, during this uh, ac accident scenario. Uh, the question is, do we have information on what caused the door to blow out? We don't have that at this time. Uh, what I was referring to is the makeup, the configuration of the plane. So the reason why this plane comes with a door that's not operational uh, is because the, the plane is configured uh, at the customer's request for essentially providing more comfort 
uh, for the passengers. It's a, a l lower number of seats and more room. And so with that, you don't need uh, emergency exits at tho that location. But the manufacturer uh, will uh, manufacture one airframe and then the components depend on the customer's needs. So in this case, it's a plug. It's not an operational door. Now granted, it, it is, you can open it from the outside for inspection, uh, but it's not an operational door, not an operational exit door. Uh, in other planes where uh, that same plane might have 215 or 220 passengers, there would be an exit door, uh, much like the traditional ex emergency exits that you would see. Yeah, um, you know, I'll provide some of that information tomorrow on what we're going to look at uh, for the investigation. I want to get with some of the groups, and um, deter but I can give you a few things. I mean, certainly we're going to look at the maintenance records. We're going to look at repair, but this is a new plane. It was delivered and uh, uh, was put into service in Nove on November 11th, but we're still going to want to look at that. Um, we'll look at the pressurization system. We'll look at the... Uh, the door, the uh, components around the door, uh, like the stop fittings around the door. We're going to want to look at the hinges. Um, there are no, as a lot of information that we'll still have to look at. We'll want to know uh, training, qualifications. We'll want to look at the safety briefings that were provided. What occurred during the uh, accident scenario itself with respect to uh, emergency operations, emergency egress. There's a lot of information that we're going to be looking at. And I could provide you more detail on that tomorrow, Th right here and then here. Okay, well, other accidents. Uh, name and affiliation? Oh, and, um, okay, great. Uh, the question is, do, I, do we suspect that there is an overall design problem with this plane based on previous accidents involving the Boeing uh, MAX? At this time, no. Uh, we are only focused on this investigation, this airplane. Uh, we are not focused on the, the fleet. Uh, but again, nothing is out. We'll go where uh, the investigation takes us and look at what we need to to make sure that we're addressing safety. Yes? Sorry, Claire, Rose, you said there were some clothing items uh, in the area and where the door blew out. Was that from clothing getting sucked off the passengers? Uh, the question is about the clothing items uh, that were around the door area. Uh, we don't know what, what, what was the, uh, why that clothing is there. Uh, I can just tell you there is some clothing in that area, but we'll look into that further. Yes? Amanda Arden with PBS. Um, do you know about what speed the plane was traveling at when it occurred? Uh, the question is on the speed of the plane, and we'll get all the information from the recorders. Yes? Can I ask a question for Mr. Wimble? Yeah. Um, what, does your past experience include investigating the Ethiopian Airlines Max crash, and are you bringing that expertise to this investigation? John, we want to step up to the mic. Um, yes, I assisted. Actually, I, I represented the United States in Ethiopia on the, the MAX uh, crash over there. Yes. So can you talk about what you've learned through that investigation that you're bringing to this experience here on the ground in Portland? Um, that remains to be seen. We did go through a lot. Um, it, it was a very complex investigation and this one we are still in early stages as the chair has indicated so um, we don't know yet your emotional perspective looking at this plane what were some of the impressions that you had as chief investigator my impressions are that uh, as the chair indicated we we're very thankful that it was at a, a particular phase of flight where it it was not more catastrophic so we're grateful for that, and uh, that's, that's a, a big thing, I and, think. Oh, and we're with CNN, by the way, so yeah. not, not affiliating. And for, can you take us through your, your day tomorrow? Like, what, when you're getting up, first order of business, give the people at home and around the world a sense of what you'll be doing tomorrow. Well, um, I'll probably be up about five or so and try to uh, um, 
make sure that everybody is well taken care of. They're the ones that do the work and I'm here to facilitate that. And, uh, but they're the specialists and the experts, so I want to really be available for them. I don't question, and, do you, uh, I was just gonna ask both of you, do you have a message to the people who are out in these neighborhoods searching for the door plug? Uh, well, first, let me, uh, one thing on the investigations that I just want to clarify, the specialties that I mentioned earlier, uh, we form accident investigation groups. Uh, when we are on scene. And these groups consist of a group chairperson who is an investigator from the NTSB with a particular expertise. I'll just say, uh, for, for example, structures. Uh, we have a, a senior accident investigator who will focus on structures. He will be the group chairperson for that investigative team. Uh, there will be a designated person from, say, um, Boeing. Uh, you would have somebody from Alaska Airlines. Uh, he may have others. Uh, I don't have the full list of who is on his team. But that investigation group will then do their portion of the investigation throughout the investigation. Uh, and John coordinates everybody and does his part to make sure that everybody gets what they need. Um, on a message for those in the neighborhoods, uh, I would just ask if you, if you find anything, please, please contact local authorities, police departments. Uh, you can also contact the NTSB through witness at ntsb.gov. That's our email, witness at ntsb.gov. If you find anything, uh, that would be very helpful uh, with our investigation. Thank you. Thank you.